Okay, in this video we're going to show you how to go from grams to moles. Pretty basic problem, but a very important problem to get correct because it's going to lay the foundation for you to solve other more complex problems in the future. So knowing how to solve problems like this is very, very important, even if it looks a little simple the way that I do it. All right, so because we involve grams, you need a periodic table. So if you don't have one handy, find one from the back of your textbook. Uh, it's usually on the inside cover, or you can easily down, download a periodic table from the web. Okay, but make sure you have one handy because you need to add the masses of the elements in the substance that you're dealing with. All right, now once you, you know that, once you add up all the masses of the different elements involved in your, in your substance, now you know the molecular mass or what's called the formula mass. And that's basically how many grams are in one mole of that substance. And then from there, you can create a conversion factor that allows you to move from grams to moles. All right, so those are the key points that I want to focus on for this introduction. Watch the video and watch what I do to go from grams <laughs> to moles. Okay, we're gonna show you how to convert from grams to moles. So here's the problem we're dealing with right now. It says, how many moles are in 100 grams of water? Which of course is H2O. Now, anytime that you're dealing with a grams problem or any problem that involves grams, you're going to need a periodic table. So if you don't have one, make sure that you get one and then uh, hit the pause button, of course, before you do that, and then come back with your periodic table and then we'll take a look, okay? So for right now, what I wanna do is solve this in two ways. I'm gonna start with the dimensional analysis style, which tends to be more popular among chemistry teachers. So here's 100 grams of H2O, and that's what we're starting with. Now, in order to go from grams to moles, we need a conversion factor that's gonna do that. So we have to look up grams on the periodic table and kind of do a little mini problem in order to figure out what the mass of water is. So I'm gonna look and find hydrogen is right here. It has a mass of 1.01, but I've got two of those. So instead of just writing 1.01, I have to do that twice because I've got two atoms of hydrogen in the formula, H2. Now oxygen's way on the other side of the periodic table, it's right here. It has a mass of 16, so going to put 16 here and add all those up. So I get two, zero, and then eight, and then one. So this tells me that I've got 18.02 grams per mole, and that is the formula mass of water. So now I've got 18.02 grams for every one mole of H2O. Of course, this is grams of H2O in the bottom. Okay, so as far as the dimensional analysis style goes, this is how you set it up. You wanna make sure that the grams of water cancels with grams of water, and at the end of the problem, you're left with moles of H2O. So we're gonna to need to use the calculator to figure out the rest of this. So I'm gonna type in 100 times one, all right? You're gonna multiply the tops and then divide the bottom, which is 18.02. And that makes my final answer 5.55 moles of H2O. So if you do the dimensional analysis style, that is all you need to do. Okay, that's your answer. You figure out the molar mass, and then once you figure out the molar mass or the gram formula weight, as it's sometimes called, you have to set it up in a way where the grams are gonna cancel. So I put my 1802 in the bottom, okay? And then that's it. Now, let me get the uh, other pen here. I'm gonna show you another method that you can use in order to solve this. Okay, now this is how you're gonna do this you're going to learn a special kind of triangle. So let me show you what the triangle's parts are, and then we'll show you how to apply that to this problem. So the triangle you divide up into three sections. The first section, which you have down here, is moles. The next section that you have here is called gram 
formula mass. Now some teachers may say gram formula weight, some teachers may say molar mass, that's all the same thing. Now at the top I'm going to write grams. Okay, and so this is the basic layout for setting up this particular magic triangle. Now, how does this apply to our particular problem? Well, I'm going to draw another triangle right below it, and I'm going to fill it in with the information for our problem. So I'm looking for the moles. So it's important that you make that x. So in this case, it's x moles of water that we're looking for. Now we were given 100 grams, and we know the gram formula mass is 18.02 grams per mole. So the way that we're going to set this up is very simple. We're going to write x moles of water, H2O, and we're going to set that equal to 100 over 18.02. Okay, and it's basically what we did on the calculator when we were solving the dimensional analysis method. Okay, but just to prove it to you, we'll take 100 divided by 18.02, and voila, you get the exact same answer. So 5.55 moles of water, and that is our final answer. Okay, so you may notice that I use the abbreviation for the mole, which is M-O-L. Either way is fine. If you wanted to write moles of water, that is also acceptable. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. Uh, watch it again or download the free, wor free worksheet and see if you can duplicate what I just did using either dimensional analysis or using one of these magic triangles. Okay, you just got done watching a video on how to convert grams to moles. So let's recap the most important steps. First, you need a periodic table in order to calculate the uh, molecular mass or the formula mass for the substance that you're dealing with. So if you didn't have a periodic table handy, make sure that you grab one for future problems that you're going to solve. All right, now, when you add up the masses of the individual elements for your substance, you're basically figuring out how many grams there are for one mole of that substance. That's what the periodic table is used for. Okay, and from that you can make a conversion factor that allows you to go from grams to moles. Alright, so pretty simple, pretty basic. Don't cheap out on the labeling. I've had many students who don't write the units. And I understand it looks like math and it is math, but the units matter because if you put things in the wrong place then you're toast, okay? And I don't want you to be toast on your next quiz or your test. All right, so label as you go and use the periodic table. And if you need more practice, you know where I am. Watch another video and I'll see you later.